guys, what is going on, and welcome back to What Shall We Do Next. I'm Mike, your host, and I hope you guys are having the best day ever. Before I get started, guys, please subscribe if you are new here and you haven't already done that. We're on the road to 151,000 subscribers, and I would love you to join me on this journey. So hit subscribe right now and join the fam. But what is going on, you guys, and welcome back. And today, we're going to be doing another scary story. That's right, guys, and today's story is called Girls Night Out. So the story of the girls' night out is a scary story about two teenage girls named Isabella and Chloe who are stalked by a dangerous murderer. But enough of the jibber jabber, let's jump right over to the story. Girls' night out. Isabella and Chloe were two typical American teenage girls. After school, they spent all of their time together, watching scary movies, having sleepovers, shopping for new clothes. They liked partying, keeping up with their friends, having fun, and just living life. They had no way of knowing the horrible fate that life had in store for them. One night, Isabella and Chloe decided to have a girls' night out. They planned to sneak out to a nightclub as soon as their parents went to sleep. Isabella kissed her parents goodnight and went up the stairs to bed. When she thought that everyone had gone to sleep, she took out her cell phone, called her friend Chloe, and told her to meet her at the store down the street. Chloe agreed and hung up. Isabella quietly opened her bedroom window, trying not to wake anyone. She stepped out onto the windowsill and climbed down the drain pipe. As she walked down the deserted street, she got a strange feeling that she was being watched. The hairs on the back of her neck pricked up. She glanced behind her, but she was alone. When she came to the corner store, there was nobody around, so she took out her cell phone and called Chloe. Okay, I'm at the store, she said. Hurry up, or I'm going home. What's wrong? Asked Chloe. I don't know, replied Isabella. This just doesn't feel like other nights. Something doesn't feel right. I've got a bad vibe. Stop it, you're just being paranoid, laughed Chloe. I'll be there in two minutes. Isabella hung up the phone but she couldn't shake the feeling that someone or something was watching her. Five minutes later, Chloe turned up and the two girls walked together to the nightclub. The girls were too young to get into the club, but the bouncers never asked them for ID. They strolled inside and pretty soon they were dancing to the music and flirting with guys on the dance floor. Around 3 a.m., Isabella was chatting to a really cute guy who must have been at least 10 years older than her. Suddenly, she felt her phone vibrating in her pocket. It was a text message from her ex-boyfriend, Anthony. She hadn't heard from him since they broke up a month ago. The text read, Come outside. I've got a huge surprise for you. Curious, she looked around and saw Chloe busy talking to some other man. So without saying goodbye, Isabella walked out the door of the nightclub. She had just taken a few steps when she received another text message. It read, Meet you around the corner over by the dumpster. The street was dimly lit and deserted. Isabella had a bad feeling in the pit of her stomach. Something didn't feel right. But she told herself that she was just being overcautious. Inside the club, Chloe was looking for her friend. After waiting for 15 minutes, she began to grow impatient. She scanned the dance floor, but there was no sign of Isabella. She even checked the toilets, but they were empty. At 3.27 a.m., a relieved Chloe got a text message from Isabella. It read, Meet me outside, now, hurry. When Chloe got outside, she received another text. I'm around the corner, over by the dumpster. Come watch me sparkle. Chloe followed the directions, crossing the dark and lonely street. When she rounded the corner, 
she was confronted by a horrific sight. Her heart almost froze in her chest. Isabella was hanging upside down from a street light in the parking lot behind the dumpster. Sparkling Christmas tree lights were wrapped around her ankles. There was a large pool of blood below her. Her body was completely stripped of clothing, revealing deep wounds along her stomach and chest. Chloe fell to the ground and began screaming hysterically. Some people who were standing at the door of the nightclub heard her cries and came rushing over. When they turned the corner and saw Isabella's bloody corpse hanging in front of them, they were horrified. The police were called and they questioned Chloe for hours, still in a state of hysteria. She could barely talk, sobbing uncontrollably. She told them how she and Isabella had sneaked out that night and gone to the nightclub together. She tried to remember all of the guys they had talked with on the dance floor. They asked if she knew anyone who would want to harm Isabella, but she couldn't think of anyone. As much as she wanted to catch Isabella's killer, she was of no help to the investigation. During the interrogation, one of the cops produced a plastic bag and took out a blood-stained envelope. We found this lodged in your friend's throat. It's addressed to you, said the cop as he handed her the envelope. Chloe was scrawled across the front. With trembling hands, she took out the piece of paper inside and read it. The letter read, Maybe if you stayed in bed like you were supposed to, things like this wouldn't happen. Don't go sneaking around at night. Bad things can happen. The cop had to grab her before she fainted. An ambulance took Chloe to the hospital and she was treated for shock. When Chloe returned home the next day, she was still shaken. Her parents told her that Isabella's ex-boyfriend, Anthony, had been arrested for the murder. He was later released after passing a lie detector test. He claimed his phone had been stolen on the day of the murder. The police didn't rule him out as a suspect in the case, but they didn't have enough evidence to charge him. As fate would have it, Isabella's murder would remain unsolved. Nobody was ever brought to trial for the crime, and as time went on, people began to forget about it. Two years had passed and Chloe had almost managed to forget about that terrible night when her best friend had been savagely murdered. One night, she called her boyfriend and asked him to meet her at the park. It was about 2 a.m. She began to walk to the park but felt a strange presence, just like the one Isabella had told her about the night that she was murdered. She was almost to the park when the feeling came across her, so she let it go. Her phone beeped. It was a text message from her boyfriend. Almost there, baby. Love you lots. It made her feel much better. Her last task was to pass by the store. The park was on the other side. She began to walk but heard something behind her. Immediately, she began to run. Her boyfriend got to the park and waited about 15 minutes. At 2.35 a.m., he got a text message from Chloe. It read, Keep walking forward, and you will see me. He did as the text suggested, and walked forward. There, hanging upside down from a tree, was the mutilated body of Chloe. Christmas tree lights were wrapped around her ankles, and she was completely naked and covered in blood. He called the police and was interrogated all night. The next day, when Chloe's boyfriend got home, there was a letter waiting for him on his parents' doorstep. It stained with small drops of blood. The note inside read, Don't go sneaking around at night. Bad things can happen. I wish I could tell you that the murders of Isabella and Chloe were solved, but that's just not the case. Today, the police say that the investigation is still ongoing, but they have no new leads. The murders are seldom spoken about nowadays. They were very high profile cases at the time, but due to the strange lack of evidence, people soon forgot about them. Everyone who was involved went on with their lives. You may be wondering how I know so much about these cases. Well, I'd rather not go into it, considering it is still an ongoing investigation. But if you must know, I was the cop who was assigned to the case. 
I was the cop who handed Chloe the blood-stained letter. You may also be wondering why the murders were never solved. Well, like I always say, don't go sneaking around at night. Bad things can happen. Holy shit! So it was the police officer all along? Oh my god, I did not see that coming. I did not see that coming. Talk about a turn of events, huh guys? Now that was actually a pretty good story, except for a couple little details here and there which I had a problem with, such as uh, the girl's ex-boyfriend, the first girl, um, Isabella or Chloe. The first one to die, her ex-boyfriend was released from jail because he passed the lie detector test. Now, <laughs> they don't do that in real life. like lie detector tests are not accurate enough to use them in this kind of situation so that's why they don't use them all the time for criminals because they're not 100 percent accurate although they are like 99.9 percent .9 accurate they're not 100 percent, and that's why they can't use them so they definitely wouldn't have let this guy go <laughs> with uh just because he passed the lie detector test so that was the only problem i had with it and um the other thing was you know handing chloe the letter from her friend's neck the police officer who found it would have opened it first. Like, they would open it to try and get as much. It's evidence. At that point, it's evidence. When they pull out a letter in an envelope from a dead girl's freaking neck, then, of course, they're going to open it, even if it is addressed. They're not going to be playing mailman and go and fucking deliver it to the person that's got the name on No, they're going to take a look what it says because it's evidence. Um, but other than those two things, I actually thought this was a pretty good story and that was a hell of a plot twist at the end. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button down below. Let's see if we can go for 10,000 million likes on this video. I would really appreciate that. And let me know in the comment section for question of the day is, what did you think of this story? Did you think it was good? Did you think it was bad? What did you think? Let me know in the comment section. That is question of the day. But thank you all so much for watching. I love you all. And remember, the most important thing, chase your dreams. I'll see you guys next time and peace out. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you guys enjoy my videos and you would like to support me and my channel more, you can go over to my Patreon. Link is in the description. I would really appreciate any help you guys have to offer. And you can become a patron of mine over there. As you can see, we have different tiers and different rewards. So if you guys want to go check it out, I would really appreciate that. Every little helps. Thank you so much. And if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe with the notification bell on. That way you don't miss any future uploads. And also guys, go follow me on all my social media. Links are in the description description i have facebook twitter instagram and even snapchat so go follow me on all of those and remember the most important thing i love you guys and chase your dreams